Welcome to Foffer AI, the channel where we explore the world of artificial intelligence and its latest tools and techniques. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a smooth, flicker-free animation like the one you can see. And you can see that this is an animation of a woman who is gradually changing into a cyborg, then a redhead, then a marble statue, then someone else, then someone else who's a bit more gothic, and then back again, and the video loops. So we're going to cover all the techniques that you can use to make something exactly like this. This is the starting point. So I started with a mid journey image and I just prompted a close up studio portrait photo of a woman. And this one seemed like a good starting point. It's quite a simple image. So I took this and I put it into stable diffusion uh, using the, the automatic 111 web UI. And I did a quick test to see how this would look just as a standard normal generation. So this is what you get out of stable diffusion. It's a lower resolution image, um, which is why it doesn't look quite as sharp as the mid journey one. And the prompt I used here was a color photo of a woman, 50 mil Canon prime lens, soft focus. And then in the negative prompt, all the stuff that I don't want. So. I don't want it to be art or a painting or a drawing or a render. I want some good exposure and I don't want any text. And then I find that garish and messy as a negative prompt work quite well. You don't get any sort of horrible color combinations if you include those. So this image looks pretty good. Uh, and this is gonna be the basis on which uh, I work from. And this is the depth map that was generated. So original image, depth map and uh, the diffused generation. So now I'm gonna dive into regional prompting. So regional prompting is an extension that you use with automatic 1111 and the extension is called SD Web UI Regional Prompter. So this is the SD Web UI Regional Prompter extension. And the gist of this extension is it lets you apply different prompts to different regions of the image. So this is a good example down here, which is, uh, this is the image that's generated. And this is the prompt. So green hair, twin tail break, red blouse break, blue skirt. So we've got a vertical split into thirds and we've asked for green hair. Then we've asked for a red blouse and then we've asked for a blue skirt. So you can see you can use this extension to apply different prompts to different parts of the image, which is extremely powerful. And you can combine this extension with ControlNet to have even more control over the output of your diffusion process. So how does this look in the web UI once you've installed it? So this is our stable diffusion web UI and here's ControlNet, which you might be familiar with. I've got that enabled and I'm using the depth model uh, as we showed earlier. And below that, we've got the regional prompter extension. Now, regional prompter, you select it to be active so that it will actually run. You choose your divide mode, whether you want it horizontal or vertical. You have a generation mode. I tend to prefer the latent version because I find I get better results. I see the prompts having greater effect. Uh, and then you select your divide ratio. This is a standard one, one, so 50, 50 split. That would be dividing the image into three. That would be dividing it to four and five and so on. Then there's a couple more options down here. So use base prompt. This is if you want to say, I want the entire image to have a single base prompt. So you can use a base prompt to apply a prompt to the whole picture and the base ratio indicates how strongly that prompt will be used. An alternative to using a base prompt is you can use a common prompt and a common prompt takes the start and applies it to each section. So let's do a comparison. So let's say you have a base prompt that says landscape photo and then your sections are a mountain and a river you could instead have a common prompt and then your sections would be a landscape photo of a mountain 
and a landscape photo of a river. So it takes that first bit and puts it in front of each of the prompts. And then you can do the same thing with uh, negative prompts. If you have created settings that you really like, you can save them as a preset. When you are writing your prompts, you uh, can put them on a new line or you can keep them on the same line. If you put them on a new line, it's a bit easier to see what the sections are. So a landscape photo break. That's my base prompt. Then a mountain break and then a river and you don't need a break at the end. So uh, this would be a 50 50 split with a common landscape photo break as the uh, a landscape photo as the base prompt or the common prompt, whichever one I've chosen. Now we've covered what regional prompting is and the extension. This is a, a, a look at how I used it to create the animation. So first I started with this regional prompt test. So we've got our original image and I split it horizontally. So I've got the left side, which I'm prompting with a simple a woman and the right side, which I'm asking for a cyborg, metallic robot, silver skin, shiny and glossy. And the whole image uses a base prompt, which is the same as before. So color photo, 50 mil Canon, prime lens, soft focus. And we've got the same negative prompt as well. And you can see through this picture that the right hand side is trying to be kind of uh, like a cyborg robot and the left hand side is trying to be just a normal photo of a woman. Now the real power of regional prompting here is that those two things wouldn't normally go together very well and what we've got still is a coherent image. So how does that work with animation? Well let's imagine that we changed the ratio. So in this version, we've got a 50-50 ratio. Left is uh, the woman, right is the robot. In this version, I've changed the ratio so that sort of, I don't know, eight tenths are the photo of the woman and then the far right hand side is the cyborg. And then let's do another generation where we just bring the ratio a bit more towards the middle. So now you can see if we flick between these, we're getting more cyborg and then we're getting even more. So let's just sort of flick between these and you can see the effect. Now what's really interesting is you can see the area on the right is changing. It's becoming more robotic, which is what you would expect. But what's also interesting is it doesn't ignore the left hand side. It still has to change the left hand side to make a coherent image. So even though that prompt and those areas have stayed the same, stable diffusion in this regional prompter is still changing the entire image to keep everything coherent. Which is why if you look at just the left hand side when I do this, you see subtle changes that keep the image coherent. So then you can take this and you can script it. So you could do this manually. You could set the divisions and uh, run a generation for each of them. And that's what I did when I was testing this. I set sort of one tenth, uh, halfway, and then all the way the, the other way across just to see what the images would look like. It would be really good if you could script the divide using the plugin. Uh, you can't do that at the moment. So you can't automatically switch from 50-50 to 50-10 uh, and all the iterations in between. But what you can do is generate your images from a list of prompts. So what does that mean? Well, rather than using just two parts with different ratios, you can instead take the image and divide it up into X number of parts. I use 20, so 20 equal parts. And then for the first 19 parts, I give all of those parts the same prompt, so a woman. And then the last part gets the robot prompt. And then on the next iteration, it's just the first 18 and two, 17 and three and so on. And that has the same effect as moving the, the robot part of the prompt gradually across the screen. It has the same effect as a two part 
uh, version with different ratios, um, but it is a lot slower to generate just because of the number of regions that it's got to cover. Uh, so just an example of what those prompts look like. So this is our base prompt. And then after each break is each sort of segment. So a woman, a woman, etc. And then at the very end, we've got our cyborg metallic prompt. And then for the next iteration, this bit here has changed. So we've got cyborg metallic and we've got that bit twice now instead of once. So now we've got all of our frames generated and they're all in the same folder as PNG files and we need to put those frames together. Personally, I like to use FFmpeg as a really quick way of stitching files together. I don't always remember the right command to run, so I'm going to show you how I use ChatGPT to do that. And then once I've got that stitched output of frames, I will upload it to Runway ML to interpolate between those frames. So let's do that now. So this is ChatGPT with GPT-4 model, and I've asked it to make a video from all of the PNG images in a folder using FFmpeg. And as you can see, it's giving me the exact command that I need to run. I would simply copy that code and put it into my terminal and that will give me the video that I need. And ChatGPT will also give a good sort of breakdown of what each of those bits are doing. So you can change those settings if you want to, if you want a slightly different video format. And this is an example of what that video looks like before we interpolate it using Runway ML. Once you've got your image with all the frames stitched together, you can take that image and upload it to Runway. And you can use Runway's really cool, super slow motion AI magic tool, which you can then use to interpolate between those frames. So if I take super slow motion and I want to set it to really, really slow, I'll process that. And then when it's ready, Runway will take all of the frames and then interpolate between them and create a nice smooth animation. So I've gone really, really slow here. So there's lots and lots of frames that have been added. You can see she's sort of gradually closing her eyes in this example. Uh, and then you can export it. So now we have created all of our generations, we've stitched them together, we've interpolated them, and we end up with a video that looks like this. Thanks for watching, I hope you found that interesting, and if you like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks very much.